This is about even and odd functions. I want to explain there's an algebraic aspect to this, a geometric aspect, and I want to explain the name and do a couple of examples. And uh, so what we're going to start with is the motivating examples, unless the computer is totally screwed up. That was weird. Okay, so here's the motivating examples. Let me do it on the freehand drawing here. Um, I'm going to look at some really simple examples, and that's just powers. And I'm gonna actually going to start with an absurdly simple power, x to the 0, which is just actually always gives you 1. That looks like this. If that's the x-axis, that's the y-axis. If I look at f of x equals x to the 1, then that looks like this. If I look at f of x equals x squared, that's a familiar parabola. Am I supposed to go through the origin? Okay, and let's continue for a couple more. f of x equals x cubed, a little less familiar, but you should have seen this already. Looks like this. And f of x equals x to the fourth. Looks kind of like a parabola, but it's important that it's steeper outside and flatter inside towards the origin. That's probably good enough. And we want to look at some uh, commonalities and differences, and particularly the geometric symmetries here. This graph is symmetric about the y-axis. If I take a point here, it's symmetric across here. This is not symmetric about the y-axis, but this one is. These Any two points here link up. The whole graph is symmetric about the y-axis. And this guy is symmetric about the y-axis. So it looks like our conjecture would be even powers symmetric about the y-axis. Okay. Now what about wad powers? Do they have a nice property? Well, yeah. If I take a point here, I can rotate it 180 degrees and it get a point here. Or in other words, if I take the whole line and rotate it 180 degrees, it'll be the same line. Is that true of our other odd power? Yeah. If I take this whole thing and I rotate it 180 degrees, I get exactly that same shape. Another way to see it, uh, to talk about what's going on, a rotated by 180 degrees is equivalent to reflect across the y-axis and the x-axis, two reflections. Um, or another way to say it is shoot directly through the origin and end up on the other side the same amount. All three are equivalent. Okay, and so it looks like, let's put it right here, odd powers, that's often called an origin symmetry. Either think of it as rotating around the origin or shooting through the origin, but it is important to note that we can also think of it as these two reflections combined. Okay, that's a, just a conjecture at this point, but um, we'll see that it's really true and we'll see how to prove it. So let's look at, and I'll go over here for the algebra. Let's see why this is true for, uh, for odd and even powers. Okay, so for an even power, for example, x to the fourth. So f of x equals x to the fourth, not 34. It would still be even, though. Okay, so how would I test this in terms of the algebra of the definition of the function? Um, why is it having this, this symmetry property? So let's just put in an example, first of all. Um, we're not going to prove this in general with examples, but it's more friendly to start with an example. We look at, let's say, f of minus 2. So we're going to look explicitly at, let's say, this is minus 2. That's supposed to be a negative sign. And we're going to compare it to what's happening at plus 2. And the claim is that these two x values, if they're across from each other symmetrically, they should have exactly the same height. That's what it means to be symmetric about the y-axis. If the x value here were different from the x value straight across opposite the equal amount, then we wouldn't have the symmetry. Okay, let's see. f of minus 2 is minus 2 to the fourth. Now what happens? The minus sign goes away because minus sign times itself, negative times itself four times, is positive. And that's the same as 2 to the fourth. It happens to be 16. But what's more important is that 2 to the fourth is what we would have gotten 
if we had calculated f of 2. And it has really nothing to do with being 2. This is a general fact. f of minus anything. So we're going to do this for a variable. By the definition, it's minus x to the fourth. The minus sign goes away. That's the same as x to the fourth. That's the same as if I had put in x. OK. So that is, in fact, the definition of what's called an even function. And my computer is really not, the, my scientific workplace is not happy. Well, let's go over to here then. I might be trying to do, ask too much of the computer here with the, the double video. OK. So the definition of an even function, algebraically, is that f of minus x equals f of x for all inputs x. That's the algebraic characterization. And so what that means is no matter what it looks like over here, let's say it looks like this, it's going to have the same shape over here. Because if I put in, for example, x equals 5, I get a certain y value. That's f of 5. But this says that if I put in minus 5, I'm going to get the same y value. And if that's true for every single x, not just some x, it's really important that this works for all x. You have to do it in general with a variable. Then uh, I'm going to get a y-axis symmetry. OK. So um, what about, so this is the definition of an even function. And so OK, we're back. I don't know what's going on. OK. So even function, I'll put it here as well, that f of minus x equals f of x for all x. OK. And we'll do another explicit example in, in a minute. Um, and then what about odd functions? So the definition, so the, let me just connect this to the powers. Basically, they're called even functions, not because even numbers are obviously present in here. It means a function that's like an even power, that behaves in the same, has the same symmetry as an even power. Odd functions, these should have the same symmetry as an odd power function. OK. So of course, of course, Leah, I erased my um, odd example. But let's put that in. So like f of x equals x cubed, why did that have this origin symmetry? So for example, 2, 2 cubed is 8. Well, minus 2 cubed is minus 8. And the fact that both of these signs change means that if I wanted to go from this point to this point, I could flip the sign of x. That's a reflection about y. And flip the sign of y. That's a reflection about the x-axis. And so let's look at that explicitly. If f of x equals x cubed, then f of minus 2 oops, equals minus 2 cubed. Now what happens when you cube it Al in the algebra? The minus doesn't go away. It stays. And that's minus 2 cubed. Those look very similar, but the parentheses are absolutely crucial. Let me actually put the parentheses here, just to be really clear. OK. So that's minus 8. But the more interesting thing is that it's the negative of what you would have gotten if you'd put in the 2 in the first place. And so what we've got is that we could say, which is describe this as an odd function is something where if I switch sign of the input, the sign of the output also switches. But that's the only thing that switches, but not the size of the output, size of output. OK. For even functions, a way to describe this was if I switch the sign of the input, then um, the output doesn't change at all. That's easier to say. Okay, But this is a really tidy way to say that in, in equations. What about for odd functions? The algebraic characterization is, OK, I'm going to switch the sign of the input. I'm going to think about any number x, like 2 worked here. I'm going to think about any number x, and I'm going to do two, two things. First, I'm going to switch the sign to flip it from maybe over here to over here. 
And I'm going to put it into f and figure out the y value there. And then I'm going to try and compare it to the y value I would get if I hadn't switched the sign. And it's supposed to be opposite. So here's on the right is I don't switch the sign, and I take the y value, and then I switch, the, I, I switch that at the end. So that's sort of taking this point and flipping it in the y. That gives you the y value. Or I take the x value and I flip it over, and I calculate that on the function. I see where that lies on the function. Do I get the same height? So are these guys opposite both in x and in y? OK. And so that's the algebraic definition of an odd function. And it has to be true, again, for all x. I can't prove this by just doing one example. OK. But let's, um, let's look at an explicit function. Actually, let's look at, um, yeah, let's look at one explicit function. Let's say, example, if I look at, let's get a little bit beyond just a power function. Let's do a polynomial. f of x equals x to the fifth minus 3x cubed plus 2x. How would I figure out what's going on? Well, you don't have to do these separately. There's one technique that does both. What we always do is put in minus x instead of x and simplify and compare to what would happen if I just had f of x. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in minus x. And you get put it in very carefully. It's a substitution here. Okay, this is not just putting a minus sign in front. The minus sign is inside. This is the absolute most important thing about algebra, and bar none. The idea that you can substitute in a new expression for x, but you have to do it very carefully and use parentheses. Now, that minus sign started out on the inside of the parentheses. We're going to try and migrate it out, but do it correctly. Now, this is an odd power, so that's going to be minus x to the fifth. Odd power, so minus, but it cancels, so you get plus 3x cubed. And then minus, whoops, minus 2x. Now what I want to do is I want to compare that to what I would have gotten with f of x. There's three possibilities. Is it exactly what I got for f of x? Absolutely not. Some signs have switched. So it's not an even function. Is it an overall minus sign times everything? Well, let's see. Let's see what happens if we factor out a minus sign. Now the minus sign is on the outside. So it's all about the difference between what happens when the minus sign is on the inside. Ooh, that's going to be a minus. Or where, what happens when it's on the outside. OK. So that's negative. If I export a negative, these signs change. They flip back. Aha. That is the negative of f of x. And so it's an odd function. One more example. Let's suppose, uh, let's say g of x, just to distinguish it, was x to the fifth minus x squared plus 1. We put in minus x. And we put that in very carefully in parentheses so that we're changing the input of the function. That corresponds in the picture to changing whatever point we're interested in, call it x, and flipping over to here and evaluating the function. Then we're going to check if it is the same height, but uh, same height or same height as negative. Um, as this one. OK, so what are we going to get? Do a little algebra, export the minus signs. We're going to get minus x squared plus 1. OK, is this exactly what we started with? No, one of the signs has changed. Is it a neg an overall negative? If we factored out the minus, no, because then this would change to plus, this would change to minus. It's not negative of g of x. OK, so this is neither. It's very important that most functions are neither even or odd. It's very different from integers, where everything is either even or odd. There's most functions are neither even nor odd. That's a good place to stop this one.